So to solve the question of the colouring of the helix, the first thing I'm going to do is create a ladder that I can colour in one direction and then twist it round. But to make sure that the colours stay with the appropriate parts, I'm going to use a UV map. And uh, there's a little program here, UV Mapper Classic, that you can find by visiting Horro's website. So if you go to Horro's website and ray tracing and tools and look down the list, you'll see, oh, there's Wings 3D and there's a link to UV Mapper. So that's what we're going to use. So back in Wings then, I'm going to create the, the stages of my ladder. So I'll start with a cube, select this edge tool, select an edge, press G, press C, bevel that. And then I'm just going to scale that down, scale uniform. I stretch this entire shape out so I can scale axis and choose one of the axis. So scale it out a bit and go for uh, 400%. So I'm just creating the, like a rung of the ladder. I'll select these ends and extrude those. Uh, if I hold the shift key down, extrude them too so they're absolutely square. And then select these edges, press L for loop, bevel those a bit, press space to deselect, select the edges again, select one of these inner ones, press I for identical. Then I can scale uniform, so that sort of brings those in. To create more of these, I can just uh, select this top edge here, for example, and use the mirror command. So I'll just use mirror a few times to build up my ladder. And because it's a doubling each time, then I won't need to do it too many times before I've got quite a big shape, like so. So that's created my stack. These all be connected because they've been mirrored, but on this side I'll need to weld them. So if I set the entire shape, right click, and weld, it'll weld down that outside edge. And then I'll select the entire object and smooth it. So you can see I've got my sort of ladder shape. Right. At this point, what I'm going to do is export that object. So I'll do export away from object and just call this uh, helix test. So I know it's not a helix yet, but it's going to be. Right. The next thing then, if I get this UV mapper classic, and then I'll go file and load model, find my model, that's here, open that, it'll give me a little report and then it says I, I've got no UV texture coordinates, so if I go to edit, new UV, UV map, I want a planner map and I don't want it to be split, if I split it I'd end up with it in two halves but I don't want it to be split and so that's now my UV map and that's just like a flat map that's going to apply to either side of the shape and I can utilize that in Bryce now using parametric mapping so I'll go file and then just go save model I'll just agree to that and find my original file and just overwrite it ask me if I want to replace it and I've done that so in Bryce well first of all we'll have a look at this untwisted model and then you'll see the effect of applying the twist so file import object locate my object wherever it's got to ah, helix test there it is okay there it is alright I'll just lift it up so it's not stuck in the ground and then uh, we'll need a material on this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, I think I've got one of the shared materials there's this this material here this rainbow texture that's created in one of the other tutorials so that's ideal at the moment it's spherical mapped but what I'm going to use is parametric mapped and in here for previewing I can use actual selection so I can get an idea of how it looks on the shape if I can find a direction in which it's lit and if I hold um, I think it's shift and control key down and use the mouse so I can use that to zoom in on the surface so this only this outside edge is lit due to the orientation of the preview which is a bit awkward so I'll have to look at the main view so see okay right you can see that it's sort of stripy in that direction which is kinda handy I'm gonna edit the material again so I want to reduce the uh, frequency of these stripes just to make them a bit more obvious so there you go can't really see it on there so I'll use a sphere again as you can see uh, before it went round a uh, full 360 but uh, that was because it was spherical map so now you can see that we've got a sort of magenta on this side and green on the other side and our aim now is to convert this into a helix but have this strip on one edge stay magenta and this one stay green and not uh, as the problem was before in uh, Danger Lad's example, which is where he was, uh, this idea came from. You can see this over at the Bryce Talk forum at dars3d.com, where we've got this 
color swapping as it follows the helix so it's going red blue red blue red blue and as i understand it what it wants it to do is be one color on one side of the helix and one color on the other and then blending across the bridge so if we go back to wings 3d we go file new don't save the changes file import and we'll import our object back in but now when we import it back in it'll have got with it a uv map associated with this geometry and the beauty of this is select the entire object switch to uh, the, the vertices right click and deform I can use the twist command on the Y axis and twist this into a helix but the UV map still retains its n sort of its knowledge of its original form so if I've done this now I've changed the geometry but I've not changed the mapping so go file export object and I'll just export it back over itself again okay little moment to export if you make the model more complex it'll take longer to export go back into Bryce now file and import object and go for our helix again here we go there we go it's now all twisted up and then I'll just move this off to the right so I've got some way of comparing it select my first helix select my second one go into the material lab and exit that will now have transferred the color from one to the other and you should now see hopefully that we've got the purple following one side and the green following the other. Obviously the lighting is not ideal for this but we could always uh, just move the sun around so you can see the front of that so it's properly lit. Okay, just lower that down so we get a bit on the front. So it's, There you go, right you can see that now. So the UV mapping through parametric uh, mapping in Bryce has forced, forced this even though the geometry is twisted to retain its original mapping from when it was flat and that way that's one way that you can use to solve this little problem and, and it also shows you how to create a helix too so there you go that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting and useful and you'll be able to uh, experiment yourself with the uh, wings 3d and uv mapper classic which is uh, quite a neat little program uh, and is ideal for these little projects and it means you can uh, don't have to get too involved with wings 3d's uv mapping which uh, it's quite it's quite fiddly and complicated i've not really got my head around it yet but yeah it's powerful i just need to figure it out okay then i'll probably do a tutorial on that when i finally worked out how it all works okay end of the video